Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 40. Can you believe we're up to 40 of these already? Uh, part 40 of my fitness database series, whether or not you care about tracking fitness. This is a video about building databases. Databases first, fitness. That's just the, the backdrop. Anyways, today we're going to see how to ignore arrow key presses in a combo box because we got some other stuff going on in that combo box. And if the user you know, starts typing in chicken and then presses the down arrow, it messes everything up. So today we're gonna fix that. And in yesterday's class, part 39, we went over the key down event. So make sure you watch that one and then come back and watch this one. Okay, yesterday we did the fixing of the tab order. All right, it's, it's, it's still today for me. It's, this is yesterday's video. Okay, right. So let's get rid of that guy. I didn't actually eat that. Now, let's tackle something that's a little more difficult. So I mentioned yesterday, we've got the similar problem down here. If I type in chicken and then I hit the down arrow, it populates that value into the box and then erases the other items and I can't go below that. So what I want to, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, if the user hit the upper down arrows, I don't want to do the stuff where I replace the, the text in the box and then drop the box down again. Just ignore all of that, okay? And the only way to do that is if we save that state, right? So the, the database knows between the time it gets to the key down event and the actual change event that handles all that, we have to be able to say, hey, you need to ignore that. Now there's three ways we can save that state. We can do it in a, a, a module level variable. We can do it in a hidden form field, or we can do it in my favorite temp bars. Let's use a temp bar. Some people say the temp bars are overused. I disagree. And I really like temp bars because you can store pretty much anything in them uh, as far as regular values go. And they save state even if you get an error in your database. So I really like to use them for like startup values and things like that, because if you do pop an error, you don't lose all your setup variables. You don't gotta restart the whole database. Whereas with like uh, uh, global variables, even module level variables, they get erased. So, okay, so the first thing to do is to indicate whether or not the user has hit the key down or key up, or the, the up arrow or the up, let me start over, the up arrow or the down arrow because they're navigating through the options in the box, right? So for this guy's key down event, all right, we're gonna come in here and say, uh, if this user hit up or down, now I don't know what those key codes are, and I really don't feel like Googling them. So here's what we're gonna do, watch this. We're just gonna say status, the key code is key code, just like that. Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna have the database tell us what keys the user is pressing. It's that simple. I don't, I don't ever Google this stuff. I just know VB key tab because I use it a million times and I remember it, but there's VB key enter and a bunch of, I don't know, I don't care. Just click here. Now, if I hit the A on that keyboard, look at that, it's key code 65. Right. If I hit a space bar, that's 32. I remember those. If I hit the up arrow, it's 38. If I hit the down arrow, it's 40. Where 39 went, I don't know. Okay, 39, that's left and right. Okay, I don't care about left and right. All I care about is up, which is 38, and down is 40. If you see those characters, don't change anything in the box. Just ignore it. That way the box stays open. It keeps the same values in it. And we don't got to worry about all this crap. So back here. Okay. Now we know we need 38 and 40. So if key code equals 38 or key code equals 40, then, and we'll say this is the up and down arrows. Now we need to pass up to the key change event. Hey, don't do anything. Right? Temp vars. Let's call it arrow key pressed equals true and if right so this will be tell on change to not process the keystroke all right now let's go find on change where are you you're up here let's see okay right here food combo change okay so this is where we initialize that other temp var because remember i said last time if you're going to check a temp var you got to make sure it's initialized first so we're going to do the same thing with this guy Okay, what do we call it? I forgot already. Arrow key pressed. <laughs> All right, if arrow key pressed is null, then set it to false. 
And while we're thinking about it, at the very end of this too, we're also gonna make sure we set it to false. Because once we processed it, return it to its initial state. Okay, now in the middle here, here's the is after update, right? We're just doing that, resetting the, the item, we're setting the box to all items. Okay, else if, my temp bar key pressed, if this is true, then what do we gotta do in here? Nothing, right? User pressed um, uh, up or down arrow, do nothing. How's that sound? Get rid of that, okay? And you don't have to put anything in there. I'm just putting that in there so it doesn't run the rest of this code. Okay, save it. A debug compile once in a while. Close it. I'm gonna close this and reopen it just so it, you know, clean, fresh slate. Okay, now if I come in here and I drop this down, everything works as it normally does. Okay, great. Now if I come in here and type in chicken, C-H-I-C-K, and I hit the down arrow now, look at that. It doesn't modify the box and I can scroll up and down between these items. Because the temp bar said, hey, the user's pressing the down arrow key. Don't do the rest of that stuff I told you to do before. And now I can come down here to fish salmon, hit enter, enter, and it goes up in the list. And now I can type P and which P? Oh, it's that P, enter, enter. See how we just made this thing so much easier to use. Fruit. Uh, oh, it's pears. Okay. Enter, enter. See, these are the things that I, I'm discovering as I'm working with. And I did not eat all of this, so we're gonna delete, 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 delete. <laughs> I thought about making it so we could select a bunch of items and then hit delete once, but you know what? These delete so fast, I'm not worried about it. And I, I've, I've, except for making videos for you guys where I've got to delete the stuff I didn't actually eat, <laughs> I haven't really had a, a big need to, like I, sometimes I, I've thought about leaving on the record selectors so I could select four of them and hit delete, but I, it's not a, it's not a problem, it's not an issue. I find that record selectors cause more problems than, than, than they solve. All right, so that was a short one for today. Tomorrow, I promise we're going to start meals. I know I found a couple of other issues I wanted to fix before we did, but tomorrow, tomorrow being Wednesday the 24th, I know, don't pay no attention to this. I'm, I'm way ahead with recording right now. Well, not way ahead, I'm a week ahead. Um, we're going to start do, tracking meals. What we're going to do is, I've, been, I've given this a lot of thought. Instead of making a second combo box, that has, this one's got food in it, and then the second one's gonna have meals in it. Nah, nah, nah. We're gonna put it all in one box, because this box is already doing some really cool stuff. So we're gonna use a union query, put all of that together in one query, and then put the stuff up here based on what it is. And if it's a meal, it'll drop five items up here. Now, if you wanna get some, uh, some uh, you wanna study ahead before tomorrow's video drops, go watch my union query video. It'll explain how union queries work. You basically can take information from multiple sources, multiple tables or queries, and put them together so they look like they're in one query. So then we can use that to feed the combo box. But then we gotta know what it is once it's in there. And this is some tricks we're gonna play, but go watch this before tomorrow's video drops. All right, so that's gonna do it for part 40, folks. See you back tomorrow for part 41. And we'll start with meals. Put meals in the little box thingy. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. See you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. 
and it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.